because effective things don't have to be complicated. They just need to be consistent. So if we want to influence the parasympathetic nervous system to help us heal, recover, regenerate, decrease inflammation, and get out of pain, it's a good idea to know the primary components of the parasympathetic nervous system. I'm going to show you them really quickly here, and we're going to focus in on one of them today with this exercise that you can do, all right? They can make a big difference for helping you relax and feel better quickly just by using the power of neurology. Now, the parasympathetic nervous system is the healing and recovery one. It's the opposite of the sympathetic, which is the fight or flight, run and get away, do whatever you can to not die right now. You're either in one mode or the other mode. You can't be in both at the same time, okay? You, you can recover after you're not dead. So getting away is the primary thing, all right? Now, you've got a couple of places that this lives. I want you to see down below at your sacrum, your tailbone. It's S2, 3, and 4, so the bottom of the spine. Now, you've also got up top at the brain stem. That's it's in the back of the head here, and you've got four of them cranial nerve number three, which is called your oculomotor nerve. Oculo means eye, motor means movement. So using the eyes will influence your parasympathetics. Then you have cranial nerve number seven, which is your facial nerve. That's going to primarily be to being able to move your face in all these different directions. So I can smile, I can frown, I can do all these sorts of things. It will also go to taste on the tongue. But that's an important one because you need to be able to read somebody's facial structures to determine is this a safe person for me or is this person going to take me out, okay? So you're hardwired to look at faces. And you can use your facial uh, muscles to make your nervous system feel better. Then you've got number nine, that's called glossopharyngeal. Glosso means tongue, pharyngeal for pharynx. And then you have cranial nerve number 10 that everybody talks about now called the vagus nerve. And that's the number one nerve in the body to control inflammation. And it's a big powerhouse for your parasympathetics, but it's not the only one. So how you get nine and 10 is singing and humming. I mean, bangers right there. That works really, really great. But we're going to concentrate on three. You're going to move your eyes in circular patterns, how I'm going to show you in just a moment, and make a difference on feeling better. Okay, It looks super simple because it is. But super simple is also super effective because effective things don't have to be complicated. They just need to be consistent. So you'll do what I'm going to show you here. I'll give you some suggestions on how much and how often. And let's see what kind of changes that you get. And hopefully you'll start to feel a lot better. Here we go. Okay, let's show you the two moves that you're going to do to stimulate cranial nerve number three, the oculomotor nerve. So this will move the eyeball and therefore have carry over to just help you what I call chillax. It's a good idea to do this either seated or lying down because it's easier for your nervous system than standing up. A few keys here. Keep your mouth closed, teeth together, tip of the tongue, middle of the tongue, back of the tongue, up to the roof of the mouth. This will also engage your vagus nerve, cranial nerve number 10, and your glossopharyngeal nerve number nine help give you better stability in your neck and your cervical spine, open up your airway so you can breathe better, and this will have you use more of your thoracic diaphragm muscle as opposed to your chest, your shoulders, and your neck, which are probably really tight from doing poor breathing, not to mention, that when you breathe in and out through your nose, you release what's called nitric oxide, which is a vasodilator. It opens up blood vessels so it makes them bigger so you can get better blood flow of oxygen to the tissues. So check the wind box. Just make sure that you do not stop breathing when you do these shapes that you follow with your eyes because I'm going to tell you now, you will likely stop breathing. So make sure you focus on that. The first one is going to be an H pattern. 
Very simple. You put your finger out in front of you. It can be about arm's length out. You'll move your eyes, not your head or your neck. So I'm going to talk as I do this. Focus on your finger. Move it to your left and follow with your eyes. Bring it up to your left-hand corner. Then down to your left-hand corner. And back up and to the middle. Now you'll have to replace it with your other finger. You'll do the other part of the letter H. Go to your right, up to the right-hand corner, down to the right-hand corner, come back up, back to the center, blink, and then breathe. Do that a couple times, see how you feel. The other option that you can do in place of or in addition to is a circle, like the letter O. From here, finger goes out. I'll move a little bit so I'm not facing right to the camera. Bring it up so it's lying with 12 o'clock on a clock. Now follow it slowly, one way. Don't stop breathing. Make your circle. Then you come back over the other way, and then you stop. Hey, guess what? You're going to get a bonus of two other cranial nerves when you do the circle and when you do the H. You're going to get cranial nerve number four, the trochlear nerve, which supplies the superior oblique muscle of the eye. And then you'll get number six cranial nerve, which is the abducens nerve that supplies the lateral rectus. So what does all that mean? You get bonus cranial nerve stimulation when you do this move. They could also help you feel a lot better. Now, they're not part of the parasympathetic nervous system, but when you stimulate those and you do the oculomotor nerve, watch out. And then reverse that, okay? So I'm going to be up here. And now I'm going to take my circle the other way. and then stop. Okay. So do a couple of circles one way, do a couple of circles the other way, and notice what kind of changes do you have in your body. Did you feel more or less relaxed with the H? Maybe a certain direction with the H, left freak you out more than the right, or did the circle make a difference for you? Did you like that more? Did you like that less? Okay. Now there's no magical number to do here. I want you to just explore and play and don't stress out about the numbers, but please keep this in mind. When it comes to the brain and it comes to neurology, more isn't better, better is better. So just because you can do 50 reps doesn't mean you should do 50 reps or it's better to do 50 reps. Most often it's not. The way you get better at things that you're not so great at in neurology is you just do the things that you're not good at, then your brain can slowly begin to learn and change, and then you'll get better at it through that neuroplasticity, okay? So working with this oculomotor nerve is very powerful because so much of what your brain takes in from the world around it is based on vision. What it sees, what it processes in the brain after it sees something and then it tells itself a story based on what it's seen and it usually will be the story it told itself in the past on what it's seen so it repeats old stories that's called habits right notice what kind of changes happen in your body when you begin to do this better range of motion less pain less anxiety less tension less stress bringing in the world of neurology. Okay. Thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in. If you like what you saw, please subscribe and like, and also check out our website. We have a membership site that's awesome. It's called the Mojo Pro membership site. You can go in there and see thousands of self-care videos that you can do and check out all of our other self-care courses as well. This is Dr. Perry. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'll see you on the next video coming out soon.